like a circle in a spiral Like a wheel within a wheel Never ending or beginning Like the circles that you find In the windmills of your Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Stogie Geek Show, and it's our debonair ideal segment for this evening. Well, you chose a very interesting topic, uh, I think, that uh, was kind of inspired by our good friend, Mr. Steve Saka. And uh, I, I think he poses some very, very uh, intelligent and engaging questions to his Facebook page. Uh, and this sparked kind of our Debonair Ideal segment for this evening. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, and if you haven't followed Steve Saka's uh, Facebook page, um, I definitely would encourage you to do that. Um, he, like, like you said, Paul, he's got some really interesting questions out there. And, you know, what really inspired this one was he was talking about cigar names and what goes into making a good cigar name and what maybe isn't a good cigar name. I kind of wanted to take it and maybe look at what some of these cigar names are that are more interesting here, kind of be more debonair about that and kind of discuss some of the more unique ones that we may see, you know, out there. I agree. I immediately think of the one that I can never pronounce, dude, and our, our good friend Nick I, I and I love his brand. He's done a great job of promoting his brand. I just have this like mental block where I can never pronounce it. El Weywinis. Is that uh, way 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 what? El Weywinis, isn't it? No, I, I way wants it. Oh, I blew it. Sorry, you Nick. blew it, dude. See, I did. Blow- <laughs> but the thing about that is. And I'm by no means a naming expert, and those those that followed some of the things that I do on the internet will, are laughing at that right now, right? I'm by no means a naming expert. Um, I didn't fully understand what goes into a name, and I've learned by experiences. Uh, unfortunately, not all of those have been very positive experiences, but um, naming is just, it's so important. Branding is so important. But having a unique name like El Want, what is it again, Nick? Well, we Wednesday, we Wednesday. Once you get it and it's ingrained in your brain, you don't forget it. And I think that's a quality of a good name, Will, is to be unique enough where there's nothing else that's close to it. But once people get it, man, it's ingrained in their brain, right? We Wednesday is certainly something that is now hopefully going to be ingrained in my brain and how you pronounce it, right? I call it Nick Cigar. And that's because they have a personal relationship with Nick. But um, I think that's important to be just different enough so that the name sticks in uh, your brain. If you get too different, you know, you, you may kind of get, get lost and people don't identify with it at all. If you get too close to other things, you know, it, you're just not standing out enough. So certainly naming and branding, and it's specific to this conversation with cigars, is super important. Yeah, I total I totally agree cuz sometimes a, you know, a name if if the name if the name just doesn't click yeah. then it's going to it's going to resonate in that consumer's mind. Um however, if the name clicks then they're going to want to buy it, you know, and I look at one that clicked with me going very going way back, but it was the old CAO Worlds and they're still around, I should say this. The CAO World Editions, like Brasilia, mm-hmm. Italia, uh, America, now they have Colombia. The fact that, you know, being an emerging stogie geek, you know, I wanted to kind of hit, yeah, I know I like Brazilian tobacco. Let me see what that Brasilia is all about. You know, Italia, yeah, I know the Italians have made tobacco. It's not as widely known, but I'm kind of curious to see, okay, what, what, what they can do with that. So those are things that immediately will, will draw me to that. Um, the I wanna, other thing, you know, I want to give props to, to Phil Zangi, though. I know he's a sponsor of the show and a sponsor yeah. of this segment, but Phil is 
awesome at branding and marketing. And I, we talked to Phil, you know, on a pretty regular basis, and he's just very, very good at the naming and branding and in marketing in general. And the names that he's chosen for his cigars that he's come out with, I think are fan- I mean, Debonair. <laughs> There's like a whole movement behind Debonair. The Indian Motorcycle Ultra Premium. I, even outside of cigars, there's a whole movement behind that cigar. So I think he's hit two home runs with the names of his of his cigars. And I know it's it's self serving, and you know it's a biased opinion, but um, his his naming, branding, and marketing is he's done very very well with that. Yeah, and you have to give him credit when he you know and he you know he broke this news to us on the three year anniversary show last year when he got the Indian Tobacco trademark. But, yes. um, he he realized that Indian Tobacco was a different cigar than he was looking to introduce to the mm-hmm. marketplace. So he took that name back. His family has a connection to Indian Motorcycle. He put two and two together, got together with the Polaris people, and he created this he basically created a new brand from his existing brand and completely redefined it. So, you know, I think if he would have called that Indian tobacco, people would have still associated yes. with, with what's a very different, and you'll talk about this, I know, in your story week, a very different cigar. I'm not knocking the cigar. It was a very different cigar, and Phil mm-hmm. will say that, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I think that's real, real important. Have you smoked the Indian more, I gotta send you some. I don't think you've smoked it yet. Yeah, between you and Stogie Santa, um, I gotta get I gotta get some of them. Um, yeah. And Phil was really, like I said, he at the trade show. Um, he, you know, he had a lot of people, you know, hitting that. So uh, you know, we wanted to make sure he took care of his customers. But um, I've the feedback I'm I'm seeing on this cigar um, is really good. So, I, I smoked through most of the line, and I'll reserve it for my Stogies of the week. Awesome! I'm What's looking that? forward to that. Yeah, looking forward to that. Um, so what else you get for for naming stuff, Will? Well, you know, I'm I'm also here, here's one I'll, I'll give you with names. You know, I actually like the fact, and I, I don't want to do I want to do a um, a Stogie Geek shorts on this, but I like this resurrection of the what I would call the dormant Cuban brands. Um, not necessarily like making a you know a diff, a, a Dominican Monte Cristo. Um, from a Cuban one, and I'm not knocking that at all. But you know, for example, we just talked with Jack about Azan was a was a Cuban brand that was, um, you know, in 1959 it was kind of abandoned, and then they kind of brought it back, and they've kind of created their their own vision of that. And you know, I think I think the brand's gone long enough where bringing it back, you know, you're talking over over 55 years, you know, bringing it back, I think it's a good thing. You know, La Polina fell fell into that boat. Uh, we just saw that with Nat Sherman with the Epoca. Um, they're kind of iconic cigars, mm. but probably no one's really smoked those original ones. So it's a way of kind of taking some classic names. Uh, probably it's a way where you don't have to worry too much if you can acquire the trademark. You got it, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not going to have to worry if someone else has that name. And, and it's a way of kind of re-energizing and kind of paying homage back to some of this history there. Um, and I was amazed when I went through the list of how many old Cuban brands and older brands that use maybe Cuban tobacco like have are in that boat. So I kind of I like that. I think it's a good thing to do. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, one of the things that uh, in a particular example will I think of naming that it, it, within <clears throat> their own brand they name them too close. And it, it, it confuses the consumer, including myself, is that the um, Padron 50, Family Reserve 50th and the Padron 50th Anniversary are two totally separate cigars. Did I get those right? Yes, you did. Okay. And they, they, are, they are two totally separate cigars. Because and- this week yep. I... Um, I added a bunch of cigars. I'm not sure exactly which ones I'm going to review in the show. I actually built up a good review queue. I don't know if you checked the blog, Will. Yes, I did. Yeah, you I see all like, those drafts out there. Yeah. We have our, our pick of which ones I could review this week or, or next week or even the week after. I think I got enough to, to in the queue to do that. Um, but I reviewed the 50th anniversary Padron in the Natural, uh, and I'll withhold my thoughts on that cigar. But it was it was hard. Even Google gets confused when I search for that, or I search for something and it you know finds a different one because I search for, you know, if you search for Padron 50th, 
you get a bunch of mixed results, right? But they're two totally different cigars. Yeah, they are. But um, named so close. Yeah, and, and if you want to really get technical, the but there's this doesn't change the problem. It, it, the the one in the humidor is the Padron 50th anniversary cigar. Yep. And then the the Family Reserve is the Family Reserve number 50. Number 50. Okay, I call it the so, 50th because we always call it the 45th and the 44th. Yeah. But it is. It's number 50. It's actually tech, and actually all yes. those are technically number 40. Number 45. But right. Not any less confusing though. No, because it's got the same number in it and some of the same words in it. Almost. Well, because I always call it the family reserve, kind of like an anniversary kind of thing, because some of the family reserves are done in honor of an anniversary. Yes. So it, it just makes it confusing for me, uh, and I'm sure a lot of other consumers as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. So it definitely, and I mean, and it's not a knock on Padron either, because I mean, they're an awesome company making awesome cigars. So I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm nitpicking here, but. Uh, we, we we are, but I mean, I, when the because the family reserves came out first, mm-hmm. and I can't tell you how many people said, "Hey, is that the cigar in the humidor?" Mm-hmm. And no, it it wasn't. Um, so it um, and, now and the band what, the bands are very different, though. The the bands are very different. Yes. So you can definitely tell when you look at the bands, which is good because some companies make some of the bands too close. <laughs> And you can't. You can't, it's tough to tell them apart. I mean, we just talked about uh, with with Jack Tarano with the Nea, uh, you know, and they had that the two blends, the classic and the F eight. Mm-hmm. And you know, to Jack's credit, he said, "Hey, we got we got to differentiate those. We have to put that secondary band oh, on." Oh yeah, it. you would uh, you would never mix up those two bands. Yeah. Yeah, they're it, very it, different, which is good, and they're very different cigars. I'm smoking the the Nea classic right now. Very different cigar from the F8. Very good though. I probably like the F8 a little more. I like that little that boldness they put in that in that blend. Uh, oh, I totally to be honest agree. with you, I, I think that uh, that might be one of my my favorite Duran blends that's out there now. Is that F8? Awesome. Yeah. No, I agree. And I love what Drew Estate did with the Willie Herrera limited editions. So they came out last year with the Herrera Esteli uh, Lancero, and they yep. put us a. a, a, a a limitada band as a secondary one. And now this year they came out with the Norteño at Churchill. There's a limitada band as a secondary. And I think that, I think that's real, real important. Um, I think it just, it makes it stand out. It gives it a, a different identity. And yeah. I think, you know, we could say it doesn't make a difference. I think it does. I think it, it, res- it, it does. It, it, well, yeah. and it also will, it has to be different, but it has to be close enough. So that consumers can identify with it. Right. So let's say you're a big Norteño fan, and they come out with a limited edition. You want that to still look like a Norteño, but be different enough that it looks like a limited. So if you're a Norteño fan, you can say, oh, that's a Norteño, but I haven't seen that one before. Oh, it's a limited. Like, yeah. I want to try that because I really like the, the regular blend. Now, they could yeah. be pretty different cigars in terms of a blending profile, but I think you're going to draw consumers to your... Uh, a different kind of blends within it under a brand. If you differentiate a little bit when you come out with that limited, just enough to make it different, but close enough so that consumers still identify. And that can be a really tough thing to do. I'm not saying that's easy by any stretch. Yep. But yeah, in addition to the band, it, it, it's, you know, the cigar's name different. So it goes back to the name. And that name is now present on the cigar. And again, you know, Jack recognized with the Nea, they were the same band and people couldn't tell mm. one was F8 or not. So. Right. That way, but one was named differently, and it was a different size. Mm-hmm. Cool. What else on, on naming <coughs> and branding, Will? You know, we talked about this with Jonathan Drew, and, and remember when we talked uh, the Underground Shade, which is the Connecticut Shade that came mm-hmm. out. Um, and remember Underground, and, and I gave Jonathan a lot of credit on this, because Underground started off kind of as a Liga Pravada der- derivative. That's where its origins are. And then when it came to introducing a Connecticut uh, shade cigar, I think Drew Estate really did their homework on market segments, and I think they, you know, they concluded that Undercrown was the right brand for it, but this wasn't a legal provided derivative. So mm-hmm. Jonathan, to his credit, said, "Hey, we're gonna. This is how Undercrown started out, but now that it's kind of taken on a life of its own, they've um, they've changed it. And, you know, they they put some different colors on 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 the Undercrown shade bands. I think that was a I think that was a good thing to do. I think that rather than Throw out another name, right, 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 because they could have easily came out with just another. And I'm not. I don't want to start listing companies that do that. But I think we know what they are. 
But they kind of said, all right, we have these brands. They're targeted at market segments. Let's see if we can find there. And, okay, if we have to kind of change the messaging a little, we'll do that. So I think that was a, a very good move they made. I agree. I agree. Yep. yep. I could. We could talk at length about branding and naming. Well, yeah. I mean, we could probably do several, several, several segments on this topic. What's the best name for a cigar you've seen um, in the let's say last twelve? Mo- I'm gonna really put you on a stop. Twelve months. Um, I for me, it's really I think the Debonair brand, and I, I know that's somewhat self-serving, and I'll, I'll try and come up with another example too, but. Just because of the meaning of that word and the the way the cigar bands look, like I just feel more debonair when I smoke a debonair cigar, right? And I know my view is somewhat tainted on that, but or right. maybe very, very skewed uh, on that. But I think we're being honest here. I mean, yeah, if, I, I really I do haven't heard think anyone say that band. I haven't heard anyone knock those bands. I yeah. really have. They're great bands. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll come up with another one at some point, but that, that's the <laughs> one that that's the one that, that comes to mind for me. No, I mean, um, I'll tell you, there's there's been a there's been a lot of um, there's been a, a lot out there. Um, I'm going. It's not. It, it's just I'm going back to the name. I love what Davidoff did with Escurio. Yeah, that is that's really because it's different from anything Davidoff. It's different, you know. They okay, they have this black label line now. And rather than call it Davidoff Brazil, they mm-hmm. basically created a word. Right. Uh, so of Escuro. Um, and then they put Escurio for putting the Rio theme in there. Um, and they probably didn't have to worry about a trademark issue. But I love the name. And it's Escur- you say the word Escurio, first thing that comes to mind is mm-hmm. Davidoff Escurio. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not knocking Nicaragua, but you say the word Nicaragua, first thing that comes to mind is country. So... I think that was a real, you know, from a naming standpoint, I, I really think that was uh, that was good. Um, I'll do a self-serving one. I love what AJ Fernandez has done with New World and Enclave. They're paying homage to going back to the roots of the origins of the cigar industry. Great branding there. Um, one's New Worlds to the Age of Ex- Explorers is paying homage to uh, Enclave's paying homage to the Native Americans. I think I did great move there. I'll give you one that's not self-serving and a sponsor yeah. whose branding <clears throat> and naming I really identified with and I think gives you kind of a different feel from what I was talking about with Debonair and that's Dissident, right? Oh! Dissident, I mean, it's kind of like two things, right? Like they put a very much of a technology kind of geeky theme on it which appeals to my persona but they also, you know, Dissident, right, is a person who opposes official policy, especially that of an authoritarian, uh, authoritarian state. And I think that's um, like you kind of feel like a rebel when you smoke it. And, and that name is, you know, kind of sticks with me. And I really identify like when I think of dissident cigars, I can see their packaging. And I kind of get this like rebellious spirit when I smoke it, which kind of speaks to what I think where we are in terms of cigar smokers, it's kind of like a rebellious thing against this authoritarian state <laughs> that we're in with all these regulations that we've talked to Glenn Loop about and uh, some of the things that I experience certainly on a regular basis uh, being a cigar smoker sometimes uh, and using things like social media and other technology and smoking laws and local regulations. The dissident brand for me, I think, is a, is one of the most wonderfully named cigars that I smoked in the past twelve months. Will. Yeah, I mean, and and the the uh, guys behind that cigar, um, they're they're pretty cool guys too. I think, I don't. The funny thing, I wouldn't call them rebels at all. I think they're they're real cigar guys. Um, Gordon and Ryan, who I met in Chattanooga, mm. uh, great guys. I can't wait get to them. have them on the show, dude. Can't yeah, wait. I, I, I have to work on that one, and I will. Um, but they. They have, I would say, an edgy personality. Yeah, which fits that that brand. And but the thing is, you know, you would. Here's the thing, and I'll be totally honest with you, and I'm not knocking. I saw one of the cigars is called Soapbox. Yes. What would I have ever picked that cigar up? I don't know, but I, I, when you smoke it, it's, a, it's and I just sent you. I think I just sent you another one of those. I think I sent. I you a um I have a review that I will do on the show of a Soapbox Perfecto. Lancero coming up yeah, next. Yeah, I think I sent. Yeah, and I think I sent you the Perfecto now too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's but 
you know, here's the thing. You know, when you meet those guys, uh, I think you understand why they've – it's – I'm not thinking of a bar of soap. It's more like standing on a soapbox. Yes, and, and, yes. and then you kind of get it. So I think you have to understand a little the branding of what they're doing there. But they're, they're, the cigars are solid. I mean, mm. they're, yeah. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, that wraps up our debonair ideal segment for this evening. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're going to do our Stogies of the Week coming up next. So stay tuned. <laughs> 